<laughs> He's like projectile spitting into her face. It was awesome. I was like, this is working. <laughs> oh, yeah, that, yeah, I'm not even going to let it go. <laughs> don't, even, don't even linger. They were wild times. Yeah, God damn it. They were wild times. But yeah, I do think if you did like some gas mask stuff, that gets people's attention. Um, do you remember in get the, the documentary Gasland, that dude, Do- Josh yes. Fox? Yes. Because he played the banjo while wearing a gas mask. Yes. I think he was just standing outside. But I think uh, the, the two-pronged gas mask has that certain toxic look to it that if you're in the Because it is. Look what they're doing to this thing. Because when they set this fire, like the guy mask. with the Bic fire lighter, like yeah. he's doing this to wipe out all these trees at once so they can have barren land to mine for gold. But they don't know where the fire is going to end. It's no, just going to go no, where it goes. They have absolutely no idea where the fire is going to go. They have no clue. Like they light it and then they just let it go. How does it stop? It burns out eventually. I did meet one woman though. One time we were, one time we were at the fires and uh, see, I, I lose my mind. I start just running like crazy. I'm looking for animals that we can save. I'm just like – I'm trying to do videos where you know I'm, I'm talking directly to our funders or to – you know, whatever stuff. And this, this stuff, this is how you tell people this story. So I'm trying to get the most insane moment of me in the fires, in the forest, you know, mm. trying to find these animals before they're burned to death. Cause sometimes you find like an animal that's scalded and just needs a little bit of direction and help. And one time I just, this bird was actually fine. It was, I think she probably like flew into some smoke and hit the ground. And I just picked up this bird and just threw it like a baseball and it just kept flying. Oh, that worked. It worked. Yeah. It worked perfect. Um, but yeah, there was actually there was there was local Peruvian firefighters there, and they're like pumping water by hand out of this like little <laughs> red truck, and it's like spraying water. And At least they're trying. They were trying. And there was this woman there. She was the next farm over, and she was going, "What about the animals? How far is this from civilization?" Uh. I mean, there's like the little city of Puerto Maldonado, and then all around that, it's just this giant human footprint, and then every year it spreads. Yeah, but how far the ones that they're doing right now, where they're where they're burning down trees with gold, how far from Puerto? What's it called, Puerto? Uh, Puerto Maldonado. How far? All, all around it, and the problem is, is that is it? It's it's you know, it's the footprint is spreading. So it used to be that the jungle was this table, and then this would be humans, that little spot. And then now the humans is spreading and the jungle is getting smaller. And then this, this area of humans is spreading too. And then eventually all of those footprints start to get wider and wider and wider. And the jungle becomes less and less and less until it's not humans in an ocean of green. It's tiny islands of green in an ocean of humans. And that doesn't work. And who – you had mentioned something about the cartels and like coming upon the village where they're like, oh, this is our village now. And they're using mm-hmm. these as safe house places to basically like make their Coke and, and ship it. Are they involved with the gold business though too? The gold mining, the logging, it's all, it's all wrapped up together because the more, I mean, the gold mining is its whole thing. The, the gold mining, because they go out there and they basically establish a place that cops can't go. That's what, you know, when we went when we went out with Matt, we went past. There's literally guys with machine guns. There's one road that goes to that area. There's guys with machine guns at the door. You can't get past them. We made contact with some miners. They were Russian miners, not Peruvian miners. Yep, and they got us right through the doors. They said, "Come with us." We got on their truck. You come now. Yeah, you come with us. <laughs> It was, you are Paul Rosalie, right? I was like, <laughs> no, he didn't. Fuck. Yes, he did. No, actually, he no, he's a really, he's actually a really nice guy. Um, is his dis- name Vlad? <laughs> Tell me it's not Vlad. Um, despite the fact that they're minors, um, we were out there and he did that. He did exactly that. We were standing there and Matt's getting ready for his shot and talking to his team. And this guy comes up to me and he was like, is your name Paul Rosalie? And I was like, I went, oh. this is how it ends. Yeah. I was like, this is how it ends. No, he was being nice though. He goes, listen, I'm not going to do it in the accent the whole time, but he goes, you see those guys over there? He goes, you see those Peruvian miners, those rough looking motherfuckers over there? He goes, I just learned your name off of them. He goes, they know exactly who you are. And he was like, so be careful. And so he actually was doing something very nice. He's going, I just met you today, but watch out. Yeah, you told the stories last time about yeah. like some of, the, I think it was your friend's dad was like filleted on a beach. But the, well, there was the, there was the yeah. uncontacted tribe ones, but also, oh, I know what it was. It was, the guy 
the gold miners took him up boat in, in the river. Yeah. And then he was tied up and then they were getting chased by something. And so they made him drive the boat and he jumped off the boat and swam. Mm-hmm. And they were going to go execute him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They, he just said, not in front of my kids. And so they were driving him up river. And they Who said was they that gonna, again? I don't want to say his name, but yeah, it's a guy that we work with. Okay. Um, and that's another one. It was very entertaining looking at the comments, that video, because everyone was like, there's no way that this happened. And it's like, there's no way that somebody kidnapped somebody to go kill them in the fucking Amazon. It's not, there's no laws. There's no laws. I mean, plus, I mean, look at what's happening all over the world right now. Like this shit does happen. Oh, yeah. And we know that this happened because he went missing and his hysterical family came to us and you can't fake that kind of trauma. You know, his kids got woken up at gunpoint and were told that they were never going to see their father again. Oh, why had he pissed them off again? Well, because he started, first he was a gold miner. Then we made friends with him. Then we said, you should build a lodge. You should start doing eco tours. And we converted him. He's a super nice guy. I was with him when the uh, the Peruvian special forces came down and they blew up his gold mining equipment. And as it the there was like hot metal raining down from the sky, we were like sheltered under a piece of sheet metal. And I was like, why don't you just do conservation? And he was like, all right, I'll give it a try. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> um, but no, super nice guy. But then then he started helping us call in where there were gold mining sites. So he actually turned into like a narc for the gold miners. Mm, they didn't like and that. And they didn't like that. And they figured out who it was pretty quick. And so then they just ambushed him in the morning and he was like literally in bed with his wife. They like burst in through the door, pulled him out by his hair. Like, but and these, then the whole story happened. These guys know who you are though and you show up to the scene when they're fucking doing it. Why don't they kill you? Uh, because I always show up with their friends. I'm saying anybody that like anytime I'm going to put myself around gold, let's say we're going to go upriver and we're going to go talk to gold miners. Well, I'm not going to just go. I'm going to do my research first. First of all, chances are that one of JJ's brothers is married to or has been married to or knows somebody who's married to a gold miner. Now you talk to that guy and you go, now, do you know anybody on the such and such a river that's doing gold mining? And they go, yeah, of course I do. Okay, let's go talk to him. You go talk to him in town. And there's something about being in town. You can call the police. You can share a Coca-Cola. There's like civilization. People act more civilized when there's pavement. There's something about the jungle where right away everybody's, you know. So you can talk to a gold miner in town. Take him out to coffee. Say, listen, I would love to come out and see what you're doing. And half the time they're like, you going to cause any trouble? No, I just want to take pictures. What do you do? I'm an environmental journalist. You go, yeah, 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 but then you're going to cause problems for gold miners. Like, mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, in my country. Not like, here. Not here. You know, we want to shut down the system and get you guys better jobs. He goes, I do have a terrible job. I can't keep doing this. We work all day long, all night long. My kids have to do it. There's mercury. We have to kill the whole forest. He's like, you know, what? come out. You have to make that human connection with them. If you show up, if me and Mosin walk into a gold mine with our cameras and we just start shooting, then we're going to get shot. Yeah. Hundred percent. So it's all about how you approach it. I think that um, the 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 places that we went with Matt, there's no chance you're getting in there without someone high level, which we had. Um, but like our guys that we've converted, nah, you just you got to know that's 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 what, again everything that we've done, every, all these stories I'm telling, anything I know about the jungle is only because I am best friends. I would say family with a group of indigenous people that know their shit. Mm. that's it. And I always give the example, um, you know, you take a kid fishing, you drive him to the stream, you bought the fishing rod, you found the worm, you put it on the hook and you found the deepest part of the stream and you hold their hands and you put it in the river and they catch a fish. It's like that. That's that's mm. all we do. We take pictures of burning forests. We do all this stuff because they say, protect our forest. Here's what you need to know. This is where the macaws nest. That's where the anacondas stay. I'm just reporting the things I've learned from them. And so it's without that, without that leadership, without that sort of wisdom guiding us, we would, you know, none of this would be happening. Who's funding the gold mining business in particular? You said it's attached at the hip with logging. So who? Mm. Where, where's the... To the logging, the the logging is is Chinese right now. Okay, so is it the same on gold mining then? No, gold mining I think stands on its own. I actually don't know. I don't want to mm. speak to things I don't know. I don't know where the finances of the gold mining comes from. I see I see it on the ground where I see them. I mean, I've seen I've, I've held them in my hands. These big chunks of gold. You know, I've been out with the gold miners, and again, we're all just chilling. They'll they'll burn the mercury off the gold, which you know 
airborne mercury is really good for you. Um, <laughs> we're all like standing there like shit. Um, but they'll have a lump of gold in their hand. And I'll be like, yeah, this is it. You put it in your hand and you go, wow, that cost us 16 acres of jungle. Holy shit. And you're just holding this. Now here's the other thing. This is the amazing thing. When you're sitting in a shack in the Amazon rainforest and everyone's got guns and there's a scale and there's gold on the scale and a weight on the scale and they trust you, you know, but they reach out and they dump this thing of gold into your hand. The room, the shape of the room changes. There is something about gold where we all understand the, 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 the front brain, the, the surface. They're like, yeah, I, you know, we're friends. You can hold my gold. It's fine. But if you think that everybody in the room, that their pulse didn't go up just a little bit, mm. depending on who's holding the gold, where the gold goes, that everyone doesn't know exactly whose pocket the gold. It's just strange. Humans have this connection to gold. When you, I've, I just, I can think of it sitting, sitting in a dark saying. room. It's very strange. I've never seen strange. that before. You see the, the dirt and the destruction and the burning forest and they're working with mud and they're through the sloughs and mercury. And then all of a sudden you, after all that work, you just have this incredibly brilliant thing. We're in this dark hut and there's just this glowing piece of gold. It was like, they get it right in Indiana Jones when he finds that little statue yes. on thing with the yep. sandbag that yep. he does. It's yep. like. When he comes up to it and it's kind of reflecting on yeah. his on his skin, you can kind of, kind of see it on his face. It's like when 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 he goes, "Do you want to hold it?" I was like, "Precious." <laughs> I was like, "Yeah, I want to hold it." <laughs> it's it, there's something about the fact it's crazy. that it's been sold as the story of wealth since the beginning of the human history that we know, but also yeah. there's a level to it of what you're getting at, which is you get something that beautiful from shit to get there that's that ugly. Yeah. Not just the way they get it. I'm not even talking about what they're doing, like, for example, to the rainforest just to be able to do this stuff. I'm talking about, like, you're digging with mud all over your face, fucking, you're, you're, maybe you're cold because you've been in the water all day trying to get to it, and suddenly in the middle of all this must and mold and whatever, boom. It's yep. like... Yeah. Well, it's also, it also is, an, it is a reality bender because, look, you, you have to go, th so it's very difficult to find. It's scarce, so it's valuable. If you can get your hands on it, it can accelerate how much wealth you have. So yes. you might have to war work for three years to amass that much value that you're holding suddenly in the palm of your hand. It's literally bending the laws of reality for mm -hmm. you as a poor farmer in the Amazon rainforest. And so all of a sudden, your brain can't help but wonder, could I kill all the motherfuckers in this room? Power. Instantly, you understand a, an, an age-old human equation all of a sudden. Treasure of the Sierra Madre. All of a sudden, when you see the gold and you see people reacting to the gold, everyone's thinking the same fucking thing. Now, to us, a small amount of gold, we're going to have a few thousand dollars, but to them... Oh, it's like a you, new world. Yeah, it's a new world. That mm -hmm. you can get your entire family out of poverty. You can get your sick kid... The medicine that will save her you can all of a sudden it matters and that and you, literally it's like you just feel everything bending in towards the gold because there maybe there's people in the room the main gold miners going yep this is a great piece of gold throws it in his pocket and wants to go get it you know change it into cash in town great maybe there's somebody in the town in the in the room that has a dying relative and it's going i need that fucking gold if i could get that gold if i could just mm. get that gold it's like the it's like the briefcase in no country for old men it's like it's cursed yes. it's laying out there you can take it but it's it's going to come with a price. 